everyone, welcome back to another video here at Justin's Fish Room. Before we begin, I would like to extend a huge warm welcome to any new members here at the JFR family. If you don't know, we are such a warm and helpful community of fish keepers and breeders. Um, if you like the content that you see on the videos, please like and subscribe. Um, don't hesitate to ask any questions down in the comments below or just say hey. Like, I just like to talk to uh, all my viewers. So, yeah, just introduce yourself, tell me what you keep breed, whatever, just get the conversation going, that's what it's all about. Alrighty, let's delve into this video. Alrighty, so fact number one is Microgeophagus ramorizi or rams are actually sexually dimorphic, which is great news for breeders. Um, for those of you who don't know what this means, it's essentially the fact that the male looks visibly different from the female uh, of the species. So the male is often larger with, I guess, more pronounced dorsal and pectoral fins as well. Not always the case, but um, in dominant males, that's quite quite um, evident. Um, and the male exhibits a lot more color than the female, um, usually. So the second one is, uh, the second fact is that rams live in something called a benthopelagic environment. So it means that they occupy the bottom of the water column. Um, not always, uh, sometimes they venture into the middle, obviously, for uh, transplantation, but they feed and breed on the, the floor of the, um, the tributary. So even though rams live in areas of freshwater species migration routes, uh, they actually don't migrate themselves. They have territories that they look after and protect. Um, these fish inhabit waters that maintain a pH of between 5 to 6. However, captive bred rams, I find, do exceptionally well in a pH of... Um, in my experience, 6.8 to 7. The temperatures that they prefer year-round is around 27 to 30 degrees Celsius, um, and this is because of um, where they are geographically located, which we'll come to now, um, and a water hardness of between 50 to 150 parts per million. Number three, rams are known to be carnivorous fish, meaning they only eat live or dead morsels. This is known due to the structure of the ram's jaw being perfect for the act of eating meat. Um, however, rams have an interesting ability to sift substrate, hence the name geophagus, actually, that means earth eater. So I'd hazard a guess in saying that rams do actually consume a range of nutrients from the soil, including organic plant matter, uh, but this is just a theory of mine uh, that I have no proof for or evidence to support. The exact geographic distribution of rams is within South America, and particularly in Rio Orinoco, um, Venezuela, and Colombia. Um, I hope I pronounced the first one correct. Please let me know in the comments if I did okay. Um, if not, uh, please let me know how to pronounce it. As we spoke about before, the temperature in these places is hot year-round. This is because these locations sit very close to the imaginary line separating the northern hemisphere from the southern hemisphere, known as the equator. So, number five is that ram reproduction is just the most amazing thing in my opinion. Um, anyways, I find it fascinating as rams are like, um, like most cichlids, biparental carers of their fry and work tirelessly to ensure their fry are protected from both the elements um, and predators looking for an easy snack. The male will find a flat stone where he'll lure the female um, so that they can begin the cleaning stage. This is when both the male and female scrape the surface of the stone, a piece of wood leaf, uh, with their lips and ensure that the surface is free of any fungus or algae that could perturb their initial success before hatching their future spawn. So once cleaning is done, the eggs are laid um, and the male immediately fertilizes these. Uh, this is something to behold uh, when seeing it and I get blown away every time I see my pairs spawning. It's mind blowing. Depending on your temperature, it can take anywhere between two to five days for the eggs to hatch and then a further two to four days for them to free swim. So this is a uh, footage that you're seeing now of um, my original pair that are still going strong. Um, I have retired them though, so I don't um, encourage them to breed, but when they do, um, I definitely, um, well now I leave the eggs with them. Um, but yeah, they were amazing. They've given rise to thousands of babies, so they've definitely done their done their job as breeders. Um, so yeah, depending on temperature, it can take anywhere between two to five days for the eggs to hatch, and then uh, like two to four days for them to free swim. 
like it can vary uh, from breeder to breeder because of the different uh, parameters and conditions of the water, but that's generally the case. So yeah, um, you'll see on the screen now there'll be some wrigglers taken on my phone. This is um, essentially them uh, building up some muscle in their tail uh, whilst consuming their egg yolk. Now you can see them free swimming, so this stage is where the fryer has finished their egg yolks and begin to look for tiny crustaceans in the water column. So, fact number six. Rams come in many different color morphs or varieties. Now, a common misconception is that the different color morphs are actually different species. This is just not true. The way I like to explain it to people is that you can have a green parakeet or budgie and a blue one, but just because their colors differ does not mean that they're different species. The reason because these color morphs are not due to the natural course of evolution, but rather the course of human intervention through line breeding. I only have the black lines and the German blue ram lines now, and blue blacks as well, but the others include, um, just off the top of my head, electric blue, powder blue, platinum, gold, black, the blue blacks, Dark Knight, and the wild type of ram, which is essentially what we know as the German blue ram. Um, there are many more lines being worked on all the time, and I'm excited to see what people actually bring out in the prospective future. Um, another misconception is that the Bolivian ram is a morph of the German blue ram. This is not the case, as the Bolivian ram has a scientific name, Microgeophagus altispinosus, uh, instead of Ramirezii, uh, Ramirezii, sorry. So they share the same genus name, but the, there are different species altogether. Um, fact number seven, so our final fact, is that uh, rams are very compatible with most fish. In fact, I have these guys with danios, tetras, bumblebee gobies, discus, angelfish, and plecos, and they just fill their niche and mind their own business quite well. However, these fish can become aggressive when they have a spawn in the aquarium, as most cichlids do, but in my opinion, they are nowhere near as aggressive as other cichlid species. So there you have it. We have gone through seven facts about Microgeophagus remorizi and have attempted to debunk some common misconceptions. If you have any further questions regarding rams or anything to do with the fish that I keep, do not hesitate and introduce yourself. I am just over the moon to be a part of this amazing fish community. Um, you have all really given me a new lease in life and I'm literally grateful to you and all the support you've been sending my way. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.